Hey everybody, I'm Jen and this is the opensource.com weekly top five video. We publish this article um, or this roundup as an article and as a video uh, every Friday afternoon. So I would encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get an alert that we have uploaded the new video. Um, it's also a great way for you to check in with the site and see what's been most popular and then choose from that list, this small short list, a couple of things that you might be most interested in reading. I know that your time is probably um, precious as it, all, as it is with all of us, so um, this might be a great way for you to check in with us weekly. All right, um, I wanted to also mention that tomorrow is Arduino Day on, um, it's every, every March, and tomorrow it's on March 28th. Um, so a lot of people around the world will be tinkering with their Arduinos and doing some fun um, maker and tinkering projects. So today we published an article that is a roundup of six fun projects that um, our staffer Alex Sanchez came up with. And so hopefully you'll find some fun in those and maybe even try one out tomorrow. All right, so let's hop into our top five this week. At number five, we have Listen to Streaming Music with Pi Music Box. After his project to control his Christmas tree lights with a Raspberry Pi, uh, Anderson Silva wondered what he would do next. Finally, he landed on tinkering with Pi Music Box. It's a spin of Raspbian and Mobity that allows users to play streaming music services like Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, as well as your local sound files. This is a step-by-step -step guide. At number four, how one professor saves students millions with his shared textbooks. Nicole Ingard interviews David Lippman of Pierce College where he is a professor. He has saved students millions of dollars with his shared textbooks. We all know how expensive they can be. And he's also built something called iMath AS. It is a free and open source math assessment and course platform. So read more from that interview with them. At number three, where is the best place online to learn a programming language? So this is another poll, another great poll that we ran this week that's doing well with readers. It is based on our last poll uh, that asked which programming language was the, is the best to learn first. So this poll follows up on that by asking from what service or organization online should you then learn that programming language. Uh, so Code Academy is out front with Coursera and some written in responses, which we love, uh, close behind. At number two, Intro to Grace, an open source educational programming language. Joshua Holm brings us an article introducing Grace and explaining just how it is designed to meet the needs of teaching and learning programming in an educational setting. Holm includes some helpful code as well as a couple of videos to round out his coverage. One of those videos includes a talk at a Linux conference by Michael Homer. Finally, at number one this week, how to do fast, repeatable Linux installations. David Both has been writing a series for us on what he calls the Linux philosophy. There are nine tenets to this philosophy, of which you can read more about in his first and second articles. This one, however, is about automating all the things. David walks us through how he installs Linux and scripts repetitive tasks, including a link to his fairly simple bash script that he uses to do configurations and installation of desired RPM packages. All right, everybody, that's our roundup this week. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.